we have a six-year-old male cat that comes in with a fever. Yeah. I'm it won't eat. It's usually also anorexic. Right. I'm looking for an infection, right? I'm, I'm thinking, especially if he's an indoor-outdoor cat, maybe he's got in a fight. So I'm looking for, on my physical, any evidence of cellulitis or abscess or wound. I'm just always start with a physical, right? And also in febrile patients, whether they're dogs or cats, I think an often overlooked but really potentially useful part of the physical exam is a retinal exam, a fundic exam. Okay. Looking for what? Looking for evidence of inflammation or infection or core retinitis. Um, that you might see in a cat, say, with toxoplasmosis, or in the dog or cat with some kind of systemic vasculitis caused by a rickettsial agent. So we want, we want to include, as part of the physical in all of our patients, but especially in febrile patients, a good fundic exam as well. All right, we're not finding anything on this febrile cat. So, you know, we're not, we can't technically call him a fever of unknown origin yet, but that's kind of what most of us would call him at this point. We've of yet unknown. We have yet unknown origin. We don't know. We gotta go looking. Where do we start? With our minimum database. He's six. So he gets a CBC, chem panel, and complete UA. He doesn't get a T4 yet. He would, if even though he's less than seven, that's when we want to start including the T4 on all cat minimum databases. But we would do that in some, we would include a T4 in some younger cats if they had signs of the disease, a palpable nodule or typical signs. Not him, no T4. Absolutely, an FBLV, FIV test would be a part of his minimum database. I know, that one is a hard one to get some clients to agree to. Uh, indoor only, no new cats. Never been sick before, negative in the past. I really have to run this test again and I say, stand firm, right, and really encourage it. Why? It's not that expensive. If it's positive, we want to know that right off the bat. We don't want to find it after having spent another several hundred or thousand dollars doing more exotic testing to find nothing, only to then think, ooh, maybe I should recheck the FBL, the FIV, and find a positive at that point. So you get it over with at the onset. That's actually often described in Europe as a pathological pound. So you want to spend the pathological pounds wisely. Cool. So, so think about where you get the most information and, and that will be, in your opinion, I, I agree with you, a very wisely spent. Right. Uh, it's something you need to know at the outset because it affects everything. If it's positive, yeah. it affects everything else. True. Okay. And if it's negative, awesome. That's one thing off the Yay. list. We celebrate normal results. Yeah. Then what? So my next step in this situation, uh, febrile cat, nothing's coming up on a minimum database, physical's pretty boring, is to get, believe it or not, um, a pancreatic-specific lipase. Why is that? The cat's not vomiting. Well, pancreatitis in cats is nothing at all like the disease is in dogs or people. Um, most common clinical signs in cats, lethargy, inappetence, dehydration. So super nonspecific signs. They can have fevers. Before I do much more, I'm going to screen for pancreatitis. Pancreatitis can present that way. And remember in cats that pancreatitis is often associated with concurrent liver and or intestinal disease. All of that could be presenting this way. Oh, one other thing. Urine culture. Okay. Yeah. So part of that initial workup would include CBC panel, urinalysis, FELV, FIV, pancreatic-specific lipase, urine culture. That, those three are the next tier, followed by imaging, chest and abdomen. Do we have pyothorax? Do we have pyelonephritis? Is there evidence of some fluid in the abdomen, peritonitis, FIP, for example, neoplasia? So even, even that you have this laboratory minimum database consisting of hematology, chemistry, and urinalysis, you may want to add to things in the initial workup because the way the patient presents. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah. I think that makes great sense. Yep. And especially, again, in cats, sick cats get FELV, FIV off the bat, part of the minimum. That is added to the minimum. In this scenario with a fever, then it's up to you and the client. With that information, you might opt for empiric course of antibiotics, see what happens. Mm. Right? Or if your clinical intuition tells you there's something more serious going on there and the clients are uh, okay with further assessment at that point, then you would get the pancreatic specific lipase, urine culture, cysto sample before antibiotics, and then imaging. 
if that's all normal, and this happens, this is what cats do. They are, <laughs> they are sometimes challenging. Riddles. Yes. And so what could you do beyond that? Well, there are other infectious diseases you can screen for using PCR testing uh, for a panel of infectious diseases, serologic testing um, would be another option, fecal exam would be another option. So you just sort of uh, continue the course of diagnostics until you get your answer or, you know, until your empiric treatment takes care of the problems.